The Virtual Boys have been playing Nintendo since they were little. These many years of experience have made them experts in the field. Or at least, they think so. Join them this week as they talk about Bayonetta. listening to the Virtual Boys Podcast, a Nintendo podcast about Nintendo things by Nintensity. This podcast is done by four friends that talk about anything and everything Nintendo. Check out the website at Nintensity.com and be sure to follow us on social media. Be sure to subscribe and share the show with your friends. Oh, of course, enjoy the show. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Virtual Boys Podcast, a Nintendo podcast about Nintendo things. This is episode 88. I'm your host, David. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what you've been waiting for, the Virtual Boys Podcast! And I'm accompanied today with James. Bayonetta, fun for the whole family. Yeah. Rated really M. So? <laughs> yeah, it's rated M, much fun for entire family. Yeah, see? <laughs> That's why it's rated M. That, that's right. why it's rated M. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just James and I today. Uh, Jordan and Skylar are both busy with lots of things. So uh, it'll, we'll, we'll just have to make do with both of us. I, I think we'll, we'll have a good time. We'll um, manage. We'll manage. If you uh, couldn't tell by our little intro statements, this week's episode is going to be all about Bayonetta. Because Bayonetta came out on Switch last Friday. So we'll be talking about that. But first want to remind you to check out our patreon page uh, these episodes are going up early as a re- reward for those that support us and you'll be able to get access to our youtube videos a day or two early as well head to patreon.com slash intensity for those rewards and if you want to talk about this episode with us uh, check out our discord community by going to nintendo.city slash discord and that's all that beginning episode stuff so let's just jump right into bayonetta The game that's rated M for much fun for families. Mm, Yes. (laughs) I know I'm having fun with it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, This game is a port from, I guess, pretty much every other console in existence to the Nintendo Switch. Um, Bayonetta was a, the final character released for Super Smash Brothers Brawl, or Brawl, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. And, uh, Yeah, Bayonetta came to Switch. It was kind of an announcement that they threw at us along with the whole Bayonetta 3 is going to be a Switch exclusive. So so now that Bayonetta is on the Switch, uh, what do you think of the port, James? Did you get a chance to uh, play it before it came out on Switch, I guess? Uh, Not really, actually. I only ever saw people play it. Um, I think it came out when I was just out of... uh, the loop and everything, so I I couldn't really uh, obviously play it at that time. And then uh, when it did come to the Wii U along with Bayonetta two, um, I just obviously I, I just didn't pick it up. Um, but you know the Switch is a perfect opportunity to pick it up because now you have a now you have it portable. And on it, I mean this is like the never ending story, but almost every game is just like um, raised raises the bar or however you want to say it it, because it's now portable you know um every game is more accessible because of that oh i I absolutely agree with that absolutely it's so fun to play this game in handheld i mean over the weekend i played through a couple of chapters while i was working on some coding while it was compiling and stuff and it was just nice to have it sitting right there and not have to shift my whole attention over to a giant screen 10 feet across the room I could just hold it in my hands and still see the progress on what I was doing. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it still looks great. You know, it's still cinematic as ever. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I guess I'm not like the most uh, potent. I don't know. With I don't really <laughs> notice the difference between resolutions too much. I mean, I can I can see them from time to time, but in this case, I, you really can't notice that much of a difference. And um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really really nice to have um but as for 
the game itself um i i really really enjoy it uh i'm not, i haven't played too many games uh just straight up action mm-hmm. games where you know you, you have button combos and, and stuff like that and, and that's particularly platinum games in general um are are, yeah. are 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 like that um so i haven't played like beautiful joe or i played a bit of wonderful 101 but <laughs> not a whole lot um and I haven't played, haven't played near out of near the near games. Uh, I'm not sure how those work gameplay wise, but since it's platinum, I imagine it's somewhat similar. But hey, I could be wrong. Yeah, I um, I don't know either. <laughs> I'm not yeah. the person to ask. I definitely want to play near, you know, but no, I I, I don't know anything. Yeah, about I, it. I hear a lot of good good things about about that game, but um, again, like I I really I really think platinum does a, a lot of good work, and Bayonetta is is really the uh um at least the it shows that they have a, a lot of good work and now that they have it on the switch is is pretty amazing yeah absolutely um see i bought bayonetta for the wii u but like i've said before on this podcast i didn't have my own wii u like at all ever uh, my family had one and then while i was living with uh, you and skylar we had skylar's wii u but i never really played any games by myself on the wii u unless i really wanted to i guess um i mostly focused on playing on my 3ds and such in in that time frame but uh yeah i i bought it never played it um but i heard great things about it it wasn't really my style of gameplay i mean it still really isn't i'm you know a pretty big fan of jrpgs and uh Zelda and plat- some platformer games and stuff like that. So an action combo game like this, you know, I wasn't too interested in. But then, like, Hyrule Warriors came out, and while it's not exactly the same combat, they still have some of those combos that you can deal out to enemies and uh, whole hordes of enemies. And so that kind of got me into the mood for this type of thing. And so when they announced Bayonetta for Switch, I was sure to... Uh, uh, grab it on launch day and it has been so much fun like I didn't think I would have this much fun with this game and this this genre period it's it's a lot of fun and I, I definitely recommend it for people that uh, you know like these types of games but uh, yeah we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute um, so how far are you in the in the game James uh, I beat the game oh you beat it uh, yeah I, I, I beat it um, but I haven't gotten to Bayonetta 2 yet. <laughs> so it's sad because you know, I was kind of hoping that uh, Jordan Sky, because I think Jordan's played Bayonetta as well, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, I know I know at least Skylar has beaten both those games, so I'd like to hear their opinion on the two. Um, but yeah, I've only I, I've only played Bayonetta, but I did but I did beat it. Um, how about how about you? Have you had a chance to beat it yet? No, actually. Um, I've been so busy with all of the ridiculous things that I have to do in the next, like, four weeks that I've only played through, like, the first five or six chapters in the game. Um, wow. For reference, uh, I I think I just beat the giant boss that's got the upside-down face with the two dragons hand head things. Okay. So not okay. very far at all. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's, like... I, I don't even I don't even know how how you, what you call bosses or whatnot but that's like that's like the first boss I guess yeah or, it, it definitely was the first boss the whole chapter was dedicated to just fighting yeah that, guy. that yeah uh, well that's and that's well let's let's continue on with that kind of discussion then and that, that's the great thing about uh, Bayonetta is you have these uh, kind of giant I don't you call them angel monsters I don't know what exactly what you call them but um, well, aren't they more like beings from the realm of Pater, uh, Pateriso or something like that? Like they call themselves angels and are from paradise, but they may or may not be the good guys. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not very far in the story, so I don't really understand. Well, I mean, it doesn't really on. have anything to do with with story. It's you know, it's I guess it's more of a the the darkness versus the light kind of kind of a thing. You know? Yeah. And, okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah, I mean, they're basically angels. I I I, I mean, I haven't. I mean, to be fair, I don't completely understand everything that go that went down in Bayonetta. Even with reading all the the book, the books. I mean, the books like the uh, 
the text that you pick up in the game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that that helped me, but still, I just kind of a little lost on some of the things. It's like, what? <laughs> why is this happening? Why, why is there a child here? What? Uh, who are you? You know, like, uh, why do I keep seeing these cinematic things? But uh, it's it's still enjoyable, and and I think that I I have a basic understanding of of everything and, and 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 the ending wraps up fairly nicely so it's it's not like you're you're, you're you finish the game you're like well, well that was weird or <laughs> nothing yeah. nothing like that it, it it does finish rather well um but anyway i i, I but what makes ben it is so cool is that um you you're constantly fighting these monsters and they're like uh some of them do repeat a little a little much it would be cool to have some variety but then again like when you get like the big bosses they are so cool and 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 uh just um menacing looking in a, in a sense like how the heck am i gonna take that down yeah and then later on later on the game you're like shooting them down easy like <laughs> obviously the hp is way low but anyway yeah and i mean the game does punish you for deaths in like the final score after the chapter because you know you play through the chapter and each checkpoint gives you a medal and the average of all of your metal scores ends up being like your final score for the chapter. And I think I have yet to get anything better than just above stone. I think it's silver with mm-hmm. most of my stuff being stone. Cause I just, I don't know how to play these games very well. No, it's dude. not, it's not my style, you know? No, um, I, I, I get you. Cause like, uh, for the first two or three chapters, I think it may have been three. I, I I was on normal mode and I was I got like silver but then the rest were stone. It's like okay, yeah. I can't I can't handle this. I can't figure this out. <laughs> like, well, I'm, or, like I I'm getting it, but I'm just not quick enough or something. Yeah, it, it's all of the dodging and stuff. I die so much, and the game like keeps track of how many deaths you have in each chapter. I'm just like, I am so terrible at this game. I'm sorry, Bayonetta. I keep killing you. <laughs> <laughs> I, for real, for real though. I mean, I. I the game does just not does not give you health that often. You can you can uh, conjure up items in a sense, or you know uh, buy with the the currency in the game. You can buy something that will regain your health. But in order to accumulate all that, it it takes a while, and it, and it's it, they they just don't give it to you. You know, right, <laughs> like, right. <laughs> They, they want you to feel like a failure, I feel. And that's one of the cool things that I found about the game. It's like, the game's like, yeah, you suck. You can't fudge this. We're, we know that you're not that skilled at the game, but that's okay because you can still get through it. You can take as many deaths as you need. just means you're not going to get a good trophy or a good checkpoint or anything. It just, you, you can play through the game and get the story. And they also have like the easier modes if you want to try that just to, to play through it for story purposes and and all that that fun stuff. But uh, what, I, what I wanted to get at with this whole chapter system is I really like how linear they are. And I know that that's kind of striking coming from me that loves Breath of the Wild and, you know, Majora's Mask and all those other games where you can kind of take the story however you want uh, in a lot of cases. Um, I really like how linear the chapters are. Of course, there are a few secrets that you can go fight more monsters and get better upgrades and all of that stuff, but you literally have a purpose every single chapter. You start at the beginning and you work through a pretty linear path to get to the end of the chapter. And that's really refreshing after playing so many of these open world games that I didn't know that I wanted anything linear. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. in a way. I mean, obviously to each their own, but I, I, I find linear games just just fine i mean i don't i don't have to have an open world to explore all the time you know right you know like right i i guess what i what i was getting at is like i've played so many open world games lately uh that it's like a, fr- a breath of fresh air coming into bayonetta because mm. I, I just haven't played anything super linear in a long time um but because of that linearity it's just fun you have a purpose you go through the chapter and if you find the secrets you find the secrets but once you finish the chapter oh it's on to the next area on to the next set of monsters and that's just really fun it's i i really like that um so uh like like you were saying earlier i don't really have any issues with the port itself the game runs just fine i don't know why so many people were like oh man we're gonna get 
Bayonetta is going to look terrible and perform terribly on the Switch because it's underpowered compared to the other consoles. And it's like, well, this is a last-gen game that they just ported to Switch, and it runs just fine. So, Yeah, I mean, it, it, it runs perfectly fine. I mean, uh, I have any issues. I don't know I don't know if the same goes for Bayonetta 2. I, right. I, I will say that you can you can tell its age a little bit. I mean, in that let's say like what how I don't know how how old the first Bayonetta is, but you can kind of tell it's like okay yeah this is a, a slightly older game. Um, I wonder if Bayonetta two has the same feel. Maybe it's just the feel of Bayonetta itself that I'm getting yeah, confused I mean, with age. But. It is a 2009 game. So yeah, so I yeah so see see you know it, there is a little bit of age then. And 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 you can you can see that like um, yeah and it's I not really a, feel it in the cutscenes more than anything like I, I, I don't know I if get, you noticed yeah, that yeah just like I, how I, the I, certain things will clip through other things and yeah yeah they they take yeah. advantage of still frames in a lot of the cutscenes to uh, portray a lot of the uh, the dialogue which is totally fine it's really cool and cinematic how I they actually, make that I actually work. kind of like that yeah like the, that I feel like that kind of makes uh, at some point some moments seem like a, a visual novel in a, in a sense yeah but there's just not a whole lot of assets on the screen at a time though you know right like it's uh it's either like bayonetta Lu- luca or lucas or whatever his name is and uh you know the little girl and that's like the only three on screen yeah, there's there's like no city people or <laughs> yeah. really mu- much much going on and I, not to say like there needs to be, um, uh, but you can just, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a sign that, oh, you know, it's not that, not that all, if that makes sense. No, that, that, that totally makes sense. It, the game shows its age, but that's totally fine because it still runs really well, plays really fast and it's really, really enjoyable to play. Oh, um, oh yeah, completely. And, uh, I feel, I feel like maybe I've, said too many negative things about it because it, it really is a, a tremendous game like uh, it's it doesn't it, it keeps you on your toes like oh yeah ne- one, you know one one moment you're you're fighting like how you normally do in Bayonetta but next you do a certain special type of gameplay that you, you're like oh okay I guess we're doing this now like <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't want to say I don't say, say what because I don't know how far you are well you know, in, oh, you're six chapter six so I don't know if you've in one of the first chapters, like I was in the middle of the cutscene, and then something crazy happened, and all of a sudden it's like press Y, and I missed it, and it was like you died. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready I for that. that. I like set the controller down for a second to kind of rest my hands and just pay attention to the 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 uh, cinematic that was happening, and it's like, oh, a giant building is falling on top of Bayonetta. Oops, <laughs> I didn't push the reaction button in time. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 that still happened to me. I, mean, I, I didn't, I never put the controller down, but it, the game was like, "No, you're too slow." It's like, "No, I pressed the button." I, <laughs> oh, maybe I'm just slow. I don't know. But anyway, like, uh, not you know, it's not even just like reaction to moments. It's like different types of gameplay. Like, I, I could honestly, honestly say there was a moment where I felt like I was playing Star Fox. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it's like. Uh, you no know, wonder Platinum did uh, start, you know, Star Fox Zero. <laughs> this is great, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? But right. Uh, uh, those moments where, where they kind of mix it up or they just they just do it because it's cool. I actually, I kind of I kind of like it. Um, it it gives Bayonetta a, this sort of charm that um, some of the games don't have, and it I, I feel like they just kind of just Kamiya, you know, the 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 creator behind this, just he just. I'm gonna do what I, what I want to do, and I don't have to be like um, stapled down by some formula, you know. Like yeah. I'm just gonna make a game that I want to make with a sexy woman and everything <laughs> like that, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. So overall, even though I've only played you know probably less than a quarter or a third of the game, I'm really enjoying it. Um, th- this brings me up to the the next point that I have written down here. That's uh, who do we think that the wh- who, what type of people I guess we could say maybe maybe that's not a good way of wording it but who would enjoy this game the most and 
Um, besides young the, children, yeah, young children definitely. You know, they they need bayonet in their lives. Uh, no, <laughs> um, I mean beyond the M rated tag. I mean, if you don't like any of the really suggestive stuff that you might see in some of the trailers for Bayonetta, then this this is a hard game to recommend for you because it is filled with that stuff. I mean, even like the first, yeah. Game. Um, I tell you, it, it got it got awkward sometimes. Like. <laughs> Please don't yeah, but, walk but, in, you know, mom. <laughs> you know that that's that's what they're obviously that's what they're uh, going for, you know. Right, right. And I think they execute that well. So if you don't mind that, like if we take that out of the equation, then I think people that really like beat 'em ups will really enjoy this game. If you're a big fan of fighters with you know lots of combos and fun stuff, then definitely pick up this game. Um, if you are familiar with Bayonetta in any way because of Smash Bros or something like that, and you want to see what her story is like, then I would even recommend it to you, even if you uh, aren't so great at combos like I am. Uh, you can set the game to easy mode and still really in, uh, play through the game. I mean, you can get the game for what, $40 on the eShop by itself? And you can get both for 60 if you buy the uh, physical copy, because it, it comes with both. It's a really good deal. Two games for sixty dollars. I mean, I <laughs> that that was one of the reasons why I grabbed the physical copy to get both of them at once. I mean, I'm gonna play through both, of course, but um, that that that's who I'd recommend it to. Did I did I miss anybody in that? <laughs> uh, um, not not necessarily. I mean, um, I. I, I word of caution that we've already mentioned, but it's just yet yeah, normal mode. It, it it is hard. It's rather I think it's too difficult. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, this is coming from a this is this is coming from a guy who is not the most skilled. I, you know, I I'll admit that. But I I really think that uh, the difficulty level on that is a little too high, and it doesn't really give you a chance to. Um, you know, master controls or it, the input is just like too little, little too precise. I, I don't know. Like, it, uh, I guess it's hard to pinpoint what the exact issue, what makes it so hard, um, other than the fact that you'd never get any health. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> um, but uh, it, so if that's a worry, just if you go to easy mode, you don't even have to go to very easy. I feel like easy is, is, is almost like a, a like, <laughs> you know, you're you're five stories high with normal mode, then you just drop down like five stories, and that <laughs> there you're, you're easy mode. That's that's the difference. <laughs> like honestly, yeah. like it it's a lot simpler. It, it, granted, there, there are still difficult moments, and you still have to have some skill, you know. But oh, yeah. uh, I feel like when I was playing in easy mode, I was having a lot a lot more fun. Yeah. So and, see, if I'm a little too if you're unsure stubborn. about it. <laughs> I well, if you're unsure about it, then yeah. I say go for that. I mean, the easy mode definitely makes it more appealing to more casual players that aren't so great at combos, and that will probably ease you into the game quite a bit. From what I understand, Bayonetta isn't the longest game ever made, so if you clear the mode on easy and then want to go back to it, you know, a week or so later after playing through Bayonetta 2, then you could do it on a harder mode then and try and challenge yourself uh, a little yeah. more. So Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do agree, though, that the difficulty on normal mode is really kind of ridiculous. Um, I've racked up more than, like, seven deaths on chapters just at the beginning of the game. I mean, I guess I'm just terrible at dodging enemy attacks that are supposedly well t- uh, telegraphed, but uh, whatever. I'll, I'll just keep trucking through, and if I really am not having a good time on normal, I'll, I'll switch to easy. I'll say, say that right out. So, um, yeah. I I don't really have anything else to say about Bayonetta. I mean, I haven't played as much of it, but uh, coming from somebody who had never played it before, I highly recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. Lot I of hope fun. more people buy it. I really do. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it, the sales figure came back for Japan for Bayonetta, and, and it's not looking too great. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe America will buy it more. That. Uh, who knows? But I honestly, it's a shame because I think Bayonetta is such a such a treat, and I mean, maybe, maybe it's the M rating that's. Oh, but that that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no. It's, it, 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 if fine. you even think you for inkling you may like it, I I say pick it up. You'll you'll still have a good time. Um, I do want to mention since Skyler's not here, uh, one of the first reviews he ever wrote for our website was uh, Bayonetta, 
And he gave it a 9.6, which is high praise. It's really what high What did he praise. give uh, Bayonetta 2? A 9.8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember him saying he liked Bayonetta, the second one, more. Um, gosh, I wish, I, again, I wish he was here because we can get his thoughts on that. But yeah, I'll definitely be playing Bayonetta 2 next, um, next on my list. So yeah. I guess we'll have, we'll have time to talk about it later. Yeah, if I if I can get through these next four or five weeks of school, then maybe I'll pick it up. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> spending my free time just relaxing more than anything uh, beyond enough. all this stuff. I mean, yeah. So uh, I guess that wraps up our discussion on Bayonetta. Um, we'll probably talk about it another time with uh, Bayonetta two when we've uh, when, when all four of us are here together because I know Skylar and Jordan have some opinions on these games. So I'll talk about that then. Um, all right, let's move on to what we've been playing this week. Uh, like I mentioned, I've only really played Bayonetta this week. Um, I've been incredibly busy with all the stuff that I have to get done. Uh, I am a physics researcher as an undergrad student, and I'm a senior, and so everything is just starting to like throw itself upon me all at once. <laughs> um, I've got you know two exams this week. I have a presentation that I'm giving tomorrow morning to my entire research group. That's you know a group of thirty plus people, and I've been running code and doing all this ridiculous stuff along with all the homework and normal things that I usually do, and so it's cut away from my video game time quite a bit. Aww. But uh, that's okay. Uh, it'll all simmer down um, after like the second week of March or so. That's when I'll be focusing on my thesis and I don't really have to make any new results because uh, I, since I work on jet engine noise, I have to submit all of my stuff to the actual military uh, to get it approved for public Ooh. release. So I can't talk about any results or even really what I'm doing. It's um, confidential. Yeah, it is confidential. It has, <laughs> has a stamp of confidentiality on there too. With Japanese writing and <laughs> and everything, really nice uh, looking Pokemon that are fan made. Oh, fake! <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> Sorry. We talked about leaks <clears throat> anyway. last week, but uh, yeah. So that's what I've been up to. Hopefully, things calm down pretty quick, but it's not really looking like it. <laughs> Have you? Did you get a chance to play Splat, Splatfest? I did. I did play the Splatfest, and that was a lot of fun. Cool. Um, I was on Team Love. I only got up to Fiend, I think, which is the fourth tier. Uh, but yeah, that it's really fun. I, I got to play some actual um, team matches. A couple of the guys on our Discord server got together and we played together on Team Love. Um, cool. <laughs> we didn't really get any matches against Team Money because the popularity of Team Love was so much higher than Team Money. Really? And, yeah, it was. It was honestly a little well, ridiculous. I guess, I guess I did see the uh, the percentages were quite high for. Yeah, it was like Love. almost split into thirds, you know, a third and uh, two thirds. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> but uh, Jeez. Splatfest is always fun. I always love playing with different weapons than I usually do in ranked because, you know, it's just turf wars. So I generally play turf wars with the end zap or the dually, uh, the hero replica dualies. Those are always fun. Just a fun way to practice uh, shooting people down and covering lots of turf. I love Splatfest. I love Splatoon too. I need to play it more. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I've been up to this week. Cool. Uh, so I finally finished Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, cool. Well, at least got through the, the main story and I saw the credits, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's still, like, the hero stuff. But I, I probably won't dip too much into that. Um, maybe I will, but having Hyrule Warriors coming up, I kind of want to not be warriored out. <laughs> that uh, makes sense because you know the games are basically the same, right? I mean, yeah. So uh, I'm excited to you know f uh, come in, come into it um, after playing Fire and Warriors and just kind of compare the two and and see what they're like. Uh, you know, you know which which uh, Nintendo series is actually a better fit for Muso, or or at least which one uh, is yeah. better. Um, so that that'd be fun to see. Mm -hmm. And then I, I've been continuing with my Let's Play Radiant Dawn. Oh my goodness! Finished part one. That was <laughs> um, oh, that was great. Like just the the chap. I believe it's the chapter before the end, or the chapter before uh, end game. Uh, Makaya's by herself. Oh man, uh -huh. <laughs> like it's great. Like oh, that that moment just kind of was uh, was one of my favorite moments in 
Fire Emblem. Is, it was really great. Uh, excited for part two. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to continue that this this week. Um, yeah. And then, uh, along with playing Bayonetta, uh, I got to play Tales of Berseria. I'm still like just, uh, I, I think I just barely beat the first dungeon. So I haven't gotten too far in that. Um, you know, just like with any JRPG, figuring out the controls for me takes a little bit of time. Um, I mean, but it's—I mean, it's not like this is overly complicated. But <laughs> there's a moment where you know, I'm like, "Whoa! I have like 90 health out of 900. What happened? And I didn't get hit at all. Like, what? What's going on? Like, you know, there, it's a certain character or, or special move or whatever. And it's like, how do I get health back? <laughs> and, uh, so. I guess I've been having an issue with health lately, <laughs> with Bayonetta in this game. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I still I like I I really like the storytelling in in uh, Tales of Berseria. It's uh, it there is a lot of, a lot of dialogue, but the characters are well read and and the writing is is well done. That it's uh, it's a joy joy to listen and watch, and I actually kind of <laughs> crave those those little uh moments where it's where you press the uh the triangle button and it'll they'll start a conversation in a random place it's like oh boy oh yeah <laughs> those are so good i i forget what they're called but i don't remember anyway, either they're like they're like side conversations or whatever it's um, like the heart to hearts in uh yeah yeah in yeah world. yeah uh so and, anyway like i i like in that game and I, I hope i can put more time to it but you know i i'm actually starting to find that I'm going back to these games that have released recently and wanting to play them. <laughs> so it, my list of games I want to play is piling up and you know, most of it's on my switch. <laughs> so it's like, uh, I gotta make, I want to make time for tales game, but I also want to play the switch game so I can talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, yeah. so that first world problems, you know, I mean, <laughs> Tales of Berseria, along with Kingdom Hearts 3 and a couple of other games that I've been looking at, I really <laughs> I really want to get a PlayStation 4 just for these games. I mean, I love the Tales series. I've been a fan of the Tales series since Tales of Symphonia. Played through that one as well as Tales of the Abyss. Tales of the Abyss deserves more praise than, it's, than it got. But anyway, um, I watched a review of Tales of Berseria last week, actually, after we recorded last week's episode. And... Uh-huh. It looks so different, but also so good, <laughs> like compared to uh, the older Tales games that I'm familiar with. I mean, I'm still upset the Tales of Graces didn't actually come out to North America, so maybe that's why I haven't been keeping up with the Tales series as much. Uh, but Tales of Berseria looks really fun. Um, I know that a lot of the storytelling is based around like moral conflict and st- and stuff. Uh, the main character is out for revenge, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, for like, sure. Instead of being this happy-go-lucky, wonderful, I'm the hero and I'm going to save the Whoa, world. She's like, yeah. I'm going to get my revenge. Well, you know, it, it, it starts off kind of like happy-go-lucky in, in, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and But it's actually it's, it's actually really nice because you're caring for your brother. And then the people in the town are like, hey, you know, you should be thinking about getting married. She's like, oh, no, what? boys, what? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm only 16. Like, stop it. And... Uh, you know that kind of a that kind of a story, and then half stuff happens, <laughs> and it's kind of like, well, we are no longer in fairy tale land; we are now in hell. No, <laughs> not maybe not maybe not that drastic, but it's uh, it's definitely a more serious tone with with a lot of light heart. There, there's still a lot of light heart moments that you find in a typical JRPG, mm-hmm. but um, anyway, I I really like it. And, I, I can't say if I could if I could recommend it to anybody yet. Um, as far as I could tell, if you don't like JRPGs, you're gonna hate this game. So <laughs> <laughs> just just gonna say that right now. All right, so uh, I, I'm good. I'm safe. <laughs> you should be you should be fine. I mean, uh, you, you like tales anyway, so it, yep. It, so it yes, be, I do. Should be good. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to talk about this one as long as I did, but oh no, it's um, fine. It's fine. Hopefully, I can get more into into this. Uh, Maybe I'll play a little before going to bed, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. If you want a Tales game to play, go grab the Tales of the Abyss on 3DS. If you're... On, on, I'm sorry, on what? Tales of the Abyss is on 3DS as well. 3DS? Okay. Yeah, it was on PlayStation 2, and oh. then they re-released it on 3DS. 
Well, you know, it reminds me of another game that released that I haven't played, but Radiant, uh, Radiant Historia. Oh, like yeah. The, the, the remake of that, remaster, whatever you want to call it, came out. And I'm like, oh, well, I, I want to play that too. Uh, sadly, it's on the 3DS. But anyway, but that's like another thing I got to add to my list. So Yeah, and Tales, of, <sighs> or not Tales, um, Secret of Mana was re-released. You know, they gave that a nice uh, fresh coat of paint. That's true. PlayStation, that's and true. I'm interested in that one. I mean... Lots mm-hmm. of JRPGs this year and last year. <laughs> there, I think a lot of people really do like JRPGs. It's not uh, as niche as it used to be. I say so, so but yeah. it's it's just crazy how they just games just keep piling on. I know. Then it's, again, the Switch. You know, we don't have we don't even know what's coming from Nintendo on the I Switch know. after Kirby. It's kind of like which mm. looks beautiful. They released a new trailer just showing off the environments, and it oh, looks man. gorgeous. I, you know, I'm really excited for Kirby. That's it's, yeah, it's gonna be too. good. It's gonna be good. It's it's gonna be great. Well, I think that'll do it for us this week, folks. Uh, before we end the episode, just like to say thanks for joining us. Your support by just listening means a ton. I'd like to give a shout out to Skyler, our co-host, and he composes our intro music and outro music. Um, you should check out his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash skytar with a five. And one last, I wanted to give another shout out to, uh, well, not a shout out, just to say, hey, go check our YouTube page. We got videos happening on there. Um, if, you, if you've been living on a rock, uh, some of our videos are actually pretty good. Maybe. I don't know. I, th- I like to think they are. I think they're we pretty actually, good. They just don't well, get any you. attention because we're a small channel. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We had one that went like, that blew that kind of blew up for a small channel but anyway yeah that's that's about it but yeah give give it give it give it a check we have a recent kirby video that was not made by us but actually a a recent guy i can't remember his name his name is james too yeah (laughs) but i can't remember he's a good guy he's gonna be making some youtube videos for us um for the foreseeable future uh so yeah check those out and all that fun stuff. Um, we'd also like to shout out to our patrons, Chris, Chase, and Rat MVP. Uh, your support, guys, means a ton. You've been supporting us for a very long time, and we really appreciate that. If you want to join them in supporting the show, head to patreon.com slash intensity. These episodes go up early as a reward for those that support us, and we're going to start releasing our YouTube videos a day or so early uh, for any amount of subscribers. So be sure to check out our Patreon page for more information about that type of stuff. We'll uh, keep you in the loop that way i also like to invite you to join our Discord community. We're trying to set up a fun place for people to visit and hang out and just talk about Nintendo things. So head to Nintendo... No, wait. Wait, you need to head to Nintendo.city, not Nintendo City. Nintendo.city slash Discord to join us today. Yeah, we don't have one of those fancy URLs for Discord yet, so that'll <laughs> link you right there. <laughs> um, so uh, thanks again for tuning into the Virtual Boys podcast this week. Uh, Especially just listening to uh, James and I talk about Bayonetta because we're Bayonetta Hello. noobs. Um, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes for the show. And we'd like to remind you to check out our website at nintensity.com where you can find news, show notes, and a whole lot more. Uh, this week's show notes will be available at nintendo.city slash EP88. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye, you good people. Mwah.